Hello and welcome to another edition of the China in Africa podcast. I'm Eric Olander, and as always, I'm joined by Kobus van Staden of Witts University, who today joins us all the way from beautiful, sunny Brazil in Rio de Janeiro. A very good afternoon to you, Kobus. Good morning. A good morning, in fact, uh, different parts <laughs> of the world here. Kobus, we've talked a lot about this year about the Chinese media narratives in Africa, in particular about Wolf Warrior 2, which was a very exciting movie that's now captured $800 million at the box office. Uh, and it really is an amazing kind of next step in the kind of portrayal of the China-Africa relations in film. So, But away from the kind of fictional characterization of China-Africa relations, as we saw in Wolf Warrior 2... There's a vibrant documentary scene that's been going on for the past few years. And every year, it seems like you and I get to meet these wonderful documentarians who are putting out different, uh, y- you know, sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long, but it's really telling the China-Africa story from this very realistic perspective. And we've generally focused on the Chinese in, uh, I'm sorry, the, when Africans are in China, they're in Guangzhou. But there are other African population centers uh, in China. One is in Iwu, and there's a very exciting documentary that we're going to talk about today focusing on Africans in Iwu. Yeah, this is really interesting because Iwu is uh, is both a, a major center for African migration and business in China, and also not a lot of attention is paid to Iwu. Um, it's a massive manufacturing city, and one of our, our previous guests, Dauda Sise, his, his work focuses a lot on, on Iwu um, from the academic side, and it is fantastic to actually see what these people's lives look like visually now by watching this documentary. And Iwu is one of the population centers for African migrants in China. Again, not many people know about this, but just to give you a little bit of background, Iwu has uh, about 1.2 million people and it's the capital of Zhejiang province. And if you think of China, you know, as the, you know, East Coast, West Coast, it's on the Eastern shore. uh, And it's what, you know, 1.2 million people, Kobus, in China is a tiny little village. So it isn't actually considered to be a very large city, where in most places, a million people is a huge city. Um, But nonetheless, it's been a trading hub for thousands and thousands of years, dating back all the way to 222 BC. And that's that's just what makes it so remarkable. So it's not surprising in some ways that it does attract people from all over the world, including uh, Africa. And so that's where it caught the attention of a group of film directors, uh, Zhang Yong, Hodan Abdi, and Fu Dong, uh, who created a documentary that came out earlier this year called Africans in Iwu, Feito Renzai Iwu, and uh, we are thrilled tonight to have Zhang Yong, who's the executive director of the Center for African Film and TV Studies at the Institute of African Studies at Zhejiang Normal University, join us on the line from Iwu. Uh, very good evening to you, uh, Zhang Yong. Yeah, well, good evening. Well, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much for to... taking the time to, okay. to talk with us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on the documentary. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you decided to focus on uh, the, 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 the characters that you developed. And let me just give you a little bit of background for everybody. The film, it follows basically five or six different Africans who are living in Zhejiang, and, and it kind of tells their story about what their lives are like. So Zhang Yong, tell us a little bit about how you came to follow these particular characters and what was the inspiration for the documentary? Yeah, two years ago, I'm a... Film PhD in Beijing Film Academy. My area is African Film Studies, so and African Media Studies. So I focus on this area for in several academic And then I after I got my PhD degree there, I come to work in Zhejiang Normal University, which is near Yiwu, and I continue to do some academic work as well as some practical work. So I want to direct a movie, a documentary about uh, African life in EU because as you know, EU is the second biggest community, African community in China. But uh, in, in Guangzhou, there are uh, much more African people there, but uh, there's no documentary focus on uh, EU, but there's some much more documentaries focused on Guangzhou. So I want to tell the story in in Yiwu. And uh, as you know, um, many documentaries uh, uh, focus on African people in Guangzhou is uh, made by the Western media, Western 
uh, directors, and there's no African director and uh, Chinese director focus on this area. So as a Chinese scholar, I want to do something different. And uh, we want to change the narrative, uh, which is uh, about uh, something uh, when we Chinese talk about Africa, we usually talk about the sex, the war, poverty, and uh, other uh, negative images. So we want to change the narrative. So how did you choose the people that you that you focused on in the movie? Yeah, actually we follow the more than 20, but uh, uh, we choose the uh, 19 in, in our edit, editor stage. We finally edit the 19 stories in the end. So among the characters that you followed, one was a, a young man who married a Chinese woman. And it talks a little bit about the difficulties that he's had mm-hmm. assimilating into Chinese life, some of the discrimination, the racism. But it also talks about the difficulties that he's had mm-hmm. in, you know, integrating with his new family, his new Chinese family. And incidentally, all of the characters that you, that you filmed speak fluent Chinese. So language was not the problem. But what was so interesting was to kind of hear the personal stories that, that really get lost in the news coverage when we talk about Africans in China. And another one was very interesting was a PhD student uh, at Zhejiang University, I think, and she is, com- she is from Somalia. She is Muslim. She wears a headdress. She yeah. uh, is incredibly vivacious, incredibly vibrant. And she talked about the story that said, you know, and I'm not quoting this particularly well, but she said that a lot of Chinese will compliment her in saying, you know, for being black, you're very beautiful. <laughs> and, and I love the way that she kind of dealt with this was through positivity. And she said, it's because I am black that I am beautiful. Mm-hmm. And how she used every single interaction that she had with people as a way to, to benefit the dialogue between Africans and Chinese. And I just thought these, these were just great characters that you were able to find. How difficult was it to get these people to participate and cooperate with you on film, the way that you got so much wonderful access with them? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm very friendly to the uh, African people. Yeah, and uh, I I'm a scholar in this area, so I'm trying my best to talk with them for more than half a year. And then I find uh, the last uh, uh, 20s who want to talk with us and do have good stories. Um, and then, how did you end up? How did you work with them? Like, what what was the the shooting experience like? Oh, it depends. Uh, for uh, in last year, we follow them their lives every day. Last year, but for this year, we 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 are familiar with their story, and we have uh, many footage now. So when they have some uh, activities or they have special things about China, Africa, or about China, they call me and ask uh, our crew to meet with him, talk with him. Yeah. So it depends. it depends. So you said at the beginning of the show that up until now, the documentaries about Africans in China have largely been done by Westerners. Uh, and some of them have been very good. Yeah. Some of them have been eh, so-so. Um, but what, what are, what, mm-hmm. now that you are telling this story from a Chinese point of view, what are you including in your story that foreigners, Westerners, white people are not capturing? Our documentary is different, different from others because we are co-directors. You know, I'm a Chinese, and my co-director is Hordan from Somali. Yeah, we are not only Chinese, uh, we are uh, point of view. We are also international, China Africa interview. So we we don't want to just show one side. Let me turn the question to you as well about the importance of owning the voice. And when Westerners and foreigners and, you know, well-intentioned as they may, as we may be, me in particular, being non-African, non-Chinese, uh, there's still something missing in, in, in the story. Um, what's the importance in your point of view as a media scholar for people to tell their own story uh, rather than through the filter or the lens of somebody else? It's very important, I think, you know, to, to, to give people the chance to decide how they want to tell this story and what they want to highlight and what they don't want to highlight. Um, I tend to, however, not be 
hundred percent of the school thinking that people can only speak about their own experiences. I think sometimes sometimes it is interesting for a, an external person to come in and look at a situation and and give their take. Um, I think, it, however, you know, obviously that always has to it always has to be made clear that this is an outsider perspective. Um, both the, the the strength and the weakness of that perspective is its outsideriness. Um, so, but you know, I think especially in the China Africa um, case, where so much of the China Africa relationship is discussed in London and and in DC, um, it it becomes incredibly ex- important for both Chinese and Africans to actually take control of that narrative to actually show what it's like. Um, Zhang Yong, did in in when you spoke when you were um, working with with these people, were there certain things that they didn't want you to show? Uh, there are some uh, things they don't want to show, uh, such as uh, like uh, religion, visa, or other negative side. But uh, I, I think uh, most of the things they, they want to talk with us. So they w- they actively yeah. wanted you to show the positive side of their lives there. Why? Uh, mm, no, not only positive side. I think uh, most of the side that they want to show to us. Uh, the reason I think is uh, maybe I, I'm an university teacher. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How how so do you respond? Then, how do you no, respond? Well, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. How do you respond to the comment that say, well, you know, you are showing a very positive portrayal of of Africans in Iwo, Somalis, uh, and Nigerians and others mm-hmm. in in Iwo, mm-hmm. but life for African migrants in China is extraordinarily difficult. Uh, immigration, the Gongan, the the people, the the police uh, are very are getting very tough on on checking visas. There's a lot of racial discrimination, a lot of difficulties that people face, and maybe you're not focusing on that as much as say a foreigner might who comes from the outside who might be a little more skeptical of China. How do you respond to to that criticism that may come towards your your documentary? Yeah, and think uh, we we also show, show the negative side. We also have the stories that uh, Chinese girl don't want to marry with uh, African girl, the guy from uh, Sudan or Tanzania. We also have this kind of story. Yeah, we lot only show positive side. Uh, yeah, this is, we 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 have different stories. Uh, if you watch the full documentary, and secondly, I want to say that uh, yeah, the the. Yiwu is very different from Guangzhou. They have a good uh, system, and uh, most of the I think most of the uh, African people who live in Yiwu they have visas. They have they do have visas. Yeah, and uh, uh, Yiwu has do has did a lot of things for the African business uh, business issues because Yiwu is the international uh, center. For just for business, it's different from Guangzhou. Finally, um, how, how you know what message would you like Africans who watch the movie to take away from the movie? Do you, you know is is it what you know if if this movie is watched by an African audience? What is the 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 kind of final feeling that you want them to have? Yeah, actually, we have showed in Tanzania Zanzibar International Film Festival. I was there this uh, July, and we hold our award premiere. And last uh, week, uh, we hold it, we screened it in in Zambia Lusaka International Film Festival. We 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 have shown in some African countries now, and we got uh, good uh, feedback. They think they open eyes. They know much more about China now, and they know each of through their own their own people's story. Yeah. Before this, they didn't know anything about this this issue. This is the problem. And if people want to watch the documentary, is it available online for for, for so people listening to the show say, Great, I wanna see Africans in Iwu. Is there any way for them to watch it? Yeah, we have uh, submit our channel to YouTube now, but uh, we are still working on this a project is in post editing stage now. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll have a link. There's a six-minute trailer 
that everybody can watch, which we'll, of course, have on mm-hmm. uh, uh, in our podcast description and on our webpage that everybody can see. Uh, Zhang Yong is the executive director at the mm-hmm. Center for African Film and TV Studies at the Institute of African Studies at Zhejiang Normal University in China. He, together with uh, Hodan Abdi and Fu Dong, uh, created what looks like uh, a stunning documentary that char- characterizes the stories of African migrants in the city of Iwu. It's called Africans in Iwu. It's making the film circuit right now. Eventually, it will be on YouTube. We will, of course, have the links whenever they are available. Uh, Zhang Yong, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm very glad to talk with you. Thank you. Kobus, the most interesting part of the discussion is this idea that he is the first Chinese documentarian to focus on this issue of Africans in China. And up until now, we've had a number of Westerners cover the subject. I am going to be very eager to see what the difference in the storytelling is. What is the Chinese voice that is different than, say, a Western voice in telling the story of the, of the, of the African experience in China? I think that's going to be the most interesting thing for me. I think it's also going to be very interesting to see how success is is represented in in the movie because you know to judging by the trailer um it to a large extent is different stories of African success in China. Um, You know, people getting PhDs, people getting married. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see how that is is portrayed and then to see what happens after that success is is attained, what happens after the PhD or after the marriage. And and I guess this goes to the the director's outlook on... on, And again, we, we have to talk about the elephant in the room here, proverbially speaking, of course, uh, that of censorship, that this is a, a documentary created in China at a public university uh, that is obviously under the supervision of the party and the government. And whether it's implicit or explicit censorship, uh, nonetheless, uh, it's, it's being created in an environment where uh, positive stories are celebrated more. This is the, uh, the notion behind CGTN, China Global TV News in Kenya, telling positive news and a proactive, positive message. And, and again, that's what I'm going to be very interested to see is are they giving a very textured, nuanced portrayal of these Africans in Iwu, or is this more a CGTN-style positive news, which could be also construed as propaganda? So it'll be interesting to kind of, you know, read between the lines on that. I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm so kind of, I have such mixed feelings about this, because on the one hand, I completely agree with you that there is... The, you know, and, and the, again, I've only seen a trailer, so I've, I've no idea what, what the film is like. You know, there is a danger of kind of glossing over some of these problems. I do, however, sometimes find it all in a different way problematic when Western filmmakers are, are hand-wringing about Af- the, as the situation of Africans in China when Africans in the West have a very tough time, Um, you know, and and when, you know, and I I find it sometimes difficult to deal with when Western filmmakers are like, oh, these poor foreign students in, in, you know, African students in China, they they are suffering such discrimination when increasingly African students can simply not get a study visa in the US or the UK or Europe, you know, so it's, there's a part of me that that sometimes bristles a little bit at at Western perspectives on, on the situation. So it's 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 yeah I'm I'm a bit muddled and, and and mixed feelingsy about all of it. Well, hopefully they they get permission to post the the, the documentary on YouTube so that we can all see it. Uh, it's not available yet in its full form on Chinese social media either. There is a six minute trailer as we mentioned earlier, but we will post all of that uh, on our various social media platforms. So for Kobus Van Staden, I'm Eric Olander. We'll be back again next week with another edition of the China in Africa podcast. Thank you so much for listening. The discussion continues online. Head over to Facebook.com slash China Africa Project to share your thoughts on today's show or follow China Africa News that's updated every four hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The guys are also on Twitter, where you can find Kobus at Stadenesk or Eric at Eolander. That's E-O-L-A-N-D-E-R. Subscribe to the China Africa podcast on iTunes or download the mobile apps for iOS, Android, or Windows Phone. Just head over to your favorite store and search for China Africa. China Africa.